Good evening. Good evening, everyone. You're all welcome to the Bible study, our own Bible study, where we cut the fire every day, every day, downloading this, downloading that. Wow, it's been an amazing, it's been an amazing month so far when we cut the fire challenge. So how was our day? How are we doing? Does anyone want to share anything significant that happened in your day today? In just one minute, one minute. Oh, maybe you're so excited. Oh, you hit the jackpot today. Let's know, let's just, you know, let's just start this um, Bible study on, you know, with high spirits. Anyone going, 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 gone. All right. So we'll just go straight into it. We're studying the book of um, Ruth chapters, chapters three and four. Tonight, um, yesterday was a one and two. So today is three and four. So hmm, my people, my people, I would love it. I really love it to be as interactive as possible. So please, I, I need you, you need me. We need ourselves tonight, you know, to make it, you know, as lively as possible and have fun with the word of God this evening. So um, I would like us to do it this way. Let's just read chapter three. You know, let's uh, put our skills, you know, let's put our skills on the platform tonight as we read. So I'm going to be calling up some, some readers, some people to help us to read. Or if you want to volunteer, please can, can we see our hands? Can we see our yellow hands up? If you want to volunteer, you're not going to read the whole chapter, obviously. Uh, I think I need like um, how many? Um, like um, four, four or five volunteers. Okay, five volunteers would be okay. Okay, who is willing to volunteer? Or oh, you're waiting for me to call names? Oh, that's my namesake. You know what the Wumis do, you know? Women is always represent. Eh? Look at this woman representing now. Mr. Woman is representing. So who else? Uh uh. What happened now? Please, why did you lower your hand? Okay. So who else wants to? Okay, for those that are just joining, you're welcome. We want, uh, we're reading now uh, Ruth chapter three, and we just want to read. Well, we want uh, quite a number of readers, like five readers. If you want to volunteer, can you please raise your hand? If you want to volunteer, I really love us to volunteer. I don't want to just put you on the spot. Okay, don't worry, I know who to call. So I'll call, um, so in this order, oh, yes, you knew I was going to call you, that was said that you knew, jelly, you raised your hand. So thank you for that. So, okay, uh, I will call, hmm, this uh, sister is just, um, she's just, you know, blinking at me, sister Adiola Shunibare. So you'll be, you be the third reader, please get your Bible close by Ruth chapter three. So in a bit, I'll tell you where you will read. So, um, so I didn't get that. Good evening. Oh uh, yeah, good evening. Yeah, we're reading Brown Ruth chapter three. So we, we're just gonna be reading the whole chapter, like take it in turns, read a few verses. Okay. And the next person takes over. Yes, so Sister DBC, are you up to it? Uh, Sister Molala, you know, I'll call you now. And then Sister Ibiumi. Sister Ibiumi Ayola. Sister Bulu Atife. Yes, so I'll call you in that order so that you read. So we can just take it. Um, I'm trying to do the math now. 
we we'll take it four, four. Okay, I've got about six people now. Okay, let's just do three. Let's do three. So, sister, will we please take our verses one to three very quickly, please? Okay. <clears throat> can you hear me? Good evening. Yes, I can. I can. We can. We can all hear. The Naomi, her mother in law, asked to her daughter, said to her daughter, Oh, sorry. The Naomi, her mother in law, said to her, My daughter, shall I not seek security for you that it may be well with you? Now, Bo Boaz, whose young women you were with, is he not a relative? In fact, he is winnowing barley tonight at the threshing floor. Therefore, wash yourself and anoint yourself. Put on your best garment and go down to the threshing floor. But do not make yourself known to the man until he has finished eating and drinking. Wow, thank you, my dear sister. Did you hear did you hear the way she read it? Like, wow, you read it very well. Well done, sis. We have talent in the house, so we're bringing up these talents. So Sister boss of the year up next, verse four. Okay. Be sure to notice where he lies down, then go and uncover his feet and lie down there. He will tell you what to do. I'll do everything you say, Ruth replied. So she went down to the trenching floor that night and followed the instructions of her mother-in-law. No, that's the next three verses. Yes. So till that's, six. Yeah, that's what I read, ma. Oh, can you imagine? I was enjoying your voice. I didn't even know you had finished. <laughs> yeah, I've gotten to verse six. Wow. Thank you so much, Sister Bosede. You know, I always like to hear your voice. So the next person, I think it's Sister Debisi. Okay. If Sister Debisi is not ready, Sister Deola Shunibare. Sister Deola Shunibare from verse seven. Okay, good evening. I'll be reading from King James Version. So I should start from verse seven, right? Yes, please. Okay, so and Boaz had eaten and drunk, and his heart was merry, and he went to lie down at the end of the heap of the of corn, and she came softly and uncovered his feet and laid her down. And it came to pass at midnight that the man was afraid and turned himself, and behold, the woman lay at his feet. And he said, Who art thou? And she answered, I am Ruth thine and made spread therefore thy skirt over than I thy and made for thou art a near kinsman. I've read the verses. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Well done, sis. Well done. I'm clapping for everyone. Uh-huh. So um I don't know whether Sister DBC is disposed to reading. Can we have our sister? Okay, yeah, she is. <laughs> So can, we, can you help us read the next three verses? Ruth chapter 3, 10 to 13. The Lord bless you, my daughter. He replied, this kindness is greater than that which you showed earlier. You have not run after the younger men, whether rich or poor. 11. Now, my daughter, don't be afraid. I will do for you all you ask. All the people of my town know that you are a woman of noble character. Although it is true that I am a guardian redeemer of your family, there is another who is more closely related than I. Yeah, thank you, Sister DBC. You can see we have various talents in the house. I should kiss them tonight. So, Sister, I've been with me. You're up next. Good evening. Can you hear me? Yes, please, we can. From 14. So Ruth lay at Boaz's feet until the morning, for she, she got up before it was light enough for people to recognize each other. For Boaz had said, no one must know that a woman was here at the Treasury floor. Then Boaz said to her, ah, bring your collar and spread it out. 
he measured six scrubs of barrel into the cloth and placed it on her back. Then he said, return to the town. When Ruth went back to her mother-in-law, Naomi asked, what, uh, mother-in-law, Naomi asked, what happened, my daughter? Ruth told Naomi everything was had, do, had done for her. And she added, he gave me these six scrubs of barrel and said, don't go back to your mother here, Lord, empty and it. Then Naomi said to her, just be patient, my daughter, until we hear what happened. The man won't rest until he has settled things to do. Wow, uh, well done, Sister Ibiomi. So it's me has read it all. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't call it. So, this is our brother Buluatife. But Sister Ibiomi has read it all. So thank you everyone for the beautiful readings. Thank you so much. So we're gonna go straight into it. So I know we would have read, read it um, before coming. So whatever jumped at you, you know, when we get to that point, you just, you know, just share. It's going to be as interactive as possible, you know. We're not preaching. It's not a preaching. It's not a service. So we're just trying to rub minds together. So let's go. Verse 1 now of chapter 3. Then Naomi, had mother-in-law, said to her, my daughter, Shall I go? No seek security for you. We've read it, so I don't really need to read it so much. But look at this um, verses one to to five. Now we'll be considering this verses one to five. See all um, all Ruth was um, sorry. Or what Naomi? You know everything she lined up. You know um, wash yourself anoint yourself, put on your best garments, um, do not uh, make yourself known to the man. You know, she was teaching her skills on how to get this man. She was, you know, she took her time, you know. So what, 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 what jumped at you when we read this um, verses one to five? Can anyone, does anyone have something to share? Anyone quickly, 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 quickly. Anyone? What do you see from this uh, verses one to five? Okay, maybe I should just read it again so that I will just refresh our memories. Then Naomi, her mother-in-law said to her, my daughter, shall I not seek security for you that it may be well with you, that it may be well with you. Now, boys, whose young women, you were with is he not our relative in fact is we know in bali tonight at the threshing floor therefore wash yourself anoint yourself put on your best garment like you know your the under the you know the your your cherished um gowns those ones that you know you keep you know at the bottom of your wardrobe you know you don't just wear it anyhow for special occasions, you know, maybe that Gina wear, you know, but do not make yourself known to the man until he has finished eating and drinking. Then it shall be when he lies down that you shall notice the place where he lies. <laughs> you know, she was really, she knows how this thing, she, she knows, you know, just like, you know, this line, I saw the thing be, she knew how the thing be. You know, she knew it and she was taking her time, you know, to help, you know, Boaz to go get her man. I'm sorry, Ruth, to go get her man. You know, like, you know, that phrase, go get your man. Come on, go get your man, girl. You know, and you shall go in, uncover his feet and lie down and he will tell you what you should do. So what jumped at us here? Anybody? Okay, I, I'm not checking the comment section. Let me do that. Maybe you are putting it in the comment section. All right, let's see. Go get your man, girl. 
positioning in the right attire, right attitude at the right place. That's from Sister Molola Fadre. Naomi giving instructions to Ruth how to present herself, yes. Naomi loved Ruth and wanted to bless her by giving her wisdom on how to position herself, yes. Yes, yes, you're all very correct. Thank you very much, my sisters. Was like a counsel or a voice over her. She knew it was time for her to move mm, to the next season and who to go to. Wow, this is amazing contributions. Thank you. Thank you, sisters, for contributing. You know, I'm so happy that I'm not alone tonight. <laughs> Although I know my husband is here and my sisters are here. My sisters are here, but um, I don't want to be alone. Mm -hmm. Please don't let me be alone. Don't let me be on the hot spot alone. So yes, I'll just be, okay. Sister Ajibola Fabumi has a hand up. Are you on mute? Yes, thank you very much. Good evening. Good evening. Yes, I just wanted to comment since you were looking for people to contribute. Um, so <laughs> I, I, found see... God, I found you. <laughs> I um, finally it... found you. Yeah. <laughs> well, I see that. You know, it's very striking that Naomi is her mother, her former, let me say ex mother in law, because her son is dead, right? Okay. Her as her own daughter. So much so that she was thinking of her, like, where is she going to end up? Who is she going to end up with? Is she just going to be following me around? Like the first verse that says, My daughter, shall I not seek security for you that it may be well with you? She was concerned about her. She, it was like, this young girl cannot just be following me around, you know, till she's old. I need her to be settled with someone that is good. And so that was why she went ahead and, you know, told her about Boaz, Boaz and, you know, gave her a bunch of instructions. And I also see there was a part that, the part where she says, but do not make yourself known. I'm jumping to verse three. But do not make yourself known to the man until he has finished eating and drinking. So you know how they say the way to a man's heart is through his belly. It is not exactly, <laughs> I wouldn't say it's exactly 100% true, or maybe it's not true in all cases. But to a certain extent, right timing is very important. You can't just approach people or approach a guy. I wouldn't even say approach it, but you just can't approach people at any time, or, you know, at any point of day or any time you feel yeah, like there is the right time for that, yes. And you need to be observant to know. Naomi was very observant. A wiser old woman. I see her as a mentor as well, a godly mentor. So I also see that young women, as we, we young women, we need to have godly mentors, older mentors, older women who have been through, who have gone through, you know, that path and are more experienced and can share wise words with us and will not lead us astray. If, God forbid, Naomi was a... Um, you know, loose woman or a woman who did not fear God. Imagine the kind of advice she would have given Ruth. And Ruth loved her so much to so follow through with her instructions. So Ruth would do the same exact thing, would follow through regardless of whether it was from a good place or not. So I also see that, you know, um, it's good to surround yourself with older, wiser women, but most importantly, godly, God-fearing. Um, that's just what I wanted to say. Wow, well done, Sister Jibola. Well done to you. In fact, you've taken over the Bible study now. <laughs> you've taken over, <laughs> over the whole place. <laughs> wow, thank you, my sister. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. You know, the Amen. questions I want to pose to us now, can people around you go all out for you? Because we could see from here that, you know, Naomi just wanted to go all out for, for Ruth. Like, I have, you know, I have a responsibility to just go all out for her. You know, are, are, are people committed to us? How, how, how do we treat people around us? How do we treat people around us? Do we, do we treat, them, treat them good that when it comes to our own turn, you'll be like, ah, you know, I, I, must, I must do good to this person. I must do, you know, they, and, and they begin to refer you to people. You know, they begin to refer you to people. Can people really, you know, 
refer you? That's another question. Can they vouch for you that, ah, if I refer this one, oh, hey, hey. But those people are not here. They are not in our midst. They are not in our midst. Those kind of people, they are not in our midst in the name of Jesus. So can you be trusted? Can people refer you? Can people refer you? What will people say about you? Are you somebody with integrity? That's a question. That's a, a big question. Are you working on your integrity? Because integ um, integrity is something we work on. We consciously work on. Like, do, do people see Jesus in you? Do people see um, excellence in you? I remember, uh, I remember an incident, you know, a family member wanted to do it a birthday for her child. And you know, obviously now, you know me, I'm always, you know, I'm always there ready to help. I know where to get this, where to get that. Okay, she called me up and said, oh, I know you know where to get everything. No, oh, I really want nice things. I want classy things, uh, party packs. I want party packs, you know, I want this number, so, so, so number, you know? And I said, okay. I'll, uh, I'll go with you so that we can pick all the things that you're aware where she's going to get them from. And the day we decided to, to meet and go to this particular place, you know, I finished my meeting early, but she was still at work and I knew she was going far away. And the usual me, like always thinking about, you know, thinking about you, how are you, how are you going to go uh, when it's so late? And I called her, I said, I'm done with my meeting. Maybe let's do it like this. Okay, how much do you want to spend? She told me how much she wanted to spend. Okay, can we just do it like this? Let me go, I'll go around because it's gonna take a while to go around, pick things, different items. Let me go and then do all the shopping for you. And then we'll meet at a particular place. You put it in your car and you just go home because she was still going to pick her child also, probably at the crash then. That was what it was. Of course, she had her money because she pl we planned to go there together. So she obviously had her money to buy those stuff. So I came back, I bought those things and I came back and she came back from work and she, she put, it, put the things in her car. Lovely things with bags and, you know, party packs in bags you know, said she was going to go home and pack them. That was the last I heard of. <laughs> Please help me ask that. Did you, did she pay, you know? As in, it was like, no, I, maybe, um, you know, the money is slow to get it to me. You know, I didn't want to believe that she could actually do something like that. So I waited, mm -hmm. maybe the next day, maybe the, two weeks. I didn't, I didn't get any money. So okay, maybe she wants to give me on the birthday. Do you believe that we did the birthday? She was packing the party packs with, her, you know, with some people who were there, you know. I said maybe that's the day she wants to give me. Do you believe that this person shared the party packs? Shared the party packs. I still did not give me my money. I'm talking about integrity. 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 No matter who the person is to you, there must be integrity. There must be, and it's not as if she was even my sister or something, you know, integrity. And how did I, <laughs> I my, my husband said, your money has got to voice me. I don't know why you carry people's matter on your head more than the people, like your money has gone to voicemail, you know? And I was like, ah, anyway, long, long story cut short. I was able to collect my money much later. I just had to tell her, I want to fix my car. Can you imagine? I want to fix my car and I need that money, you know? 
And he said, ah, okay, I, I I'll send it to you tomorrow. And lo and behold, the next day, I got it. Why do you have to wait for, for people to embarrass you? I, I believe those kind of people are not here. And if we are here, we will repent tonight in the name of Jesus. So that kind of person now, I just want to pose that question now. Will I go and recommend that kind of person? If you tell me that you want to, hey, <laughs> you know, I, I won't. So we, we, we just have to work on our integrity on a daily basis, on a daily basis. If we want people to go out for us, then we must be trusted. We must, they must be able to trust us, you know, trust us. And I want to give a practical example. You know, we're talking Bible, but uh, we're talking Bible, but there, there, there are roots in our midst. How did I become friends with Sister Toyin? Sister Toyin is the head of She's. She's my very good friend, my sister from another mother. You know, we met um, at a retreat, just uh, the 0365 retreats uh, some, I think was it three or four years ago. We just met, hi, hi, you know. And Lord was telling me, you're gonna make a friend today. I was wondering who he was. So the next time I saw her, you know, it, that really got my attention. I saw her with uh, my very good friend, Sister Fikaya. And, I was, and when she left her, I asked, I asked her, how is this person? She said, ah, uh, she's, a, she's a nice person. She's, are you sure? Uh, uh, she's a correct person. Is she somebody I can be friends with? So uh, why now? Somebody I can vouch for. What, what can people say about you? What can be, oh, oh, my sister is on the call. Now you're here now. Sister Tony, you just joined. So I was talking about you, how I got, you know, how we became friends. You know, I did my due diligence. You know, people won't just allow you, you know, except they are just uh, rubbish people. Or anyhow, people, if you want to have correct people in your life, in your lives, you have to, you have, you have, you have to be able to go the extra mile with your character. We're talking character tonight character character you know and then uh, the, uh, the relationship has gone <laughs> has gone you know has gone over over the seas you know like that i remember um uh, sister Tony's 40th she entered her 40th in you know the highest way anyone will ever want to enter 40 you know she entered it in the highest form of prophetic, prophetic alliance. You know, she said she wanted a sleepover, and we um, we slept in our house, myself and uh, Pastor Mori. You know, and she slept in our middle. Pastor Mori was on the left, I was on the right. You know, and then we prayed, we danced into her birthday, and you know, it was it was a very wonderful experience so will she have had that experience if she wasn't someone that you could rely on if she wasn't somebody that you could vouch for and will i even have been able to go for that sleepover if my husband didn't see something in her no i wouldn't have been able to do that so we're talking about integrity a good name is better than silver or gold the Bible says, let your light so shine before men. Let your light so shine before men. It's not just before the pastor. It's not just before uh, IRA members, before men. That they may, I'm trying to point something out to you here now. That they may see your what? I don't know who can answer me. Maybe the Bible says that, that they may see you prophesy. That they may see you pray oh scat scat bashing that they may see you you know digging deep in the word that they may see you you know singing you know doing this doing that is that what the bible says can somebody tell me what the bible says that they may do what they may see your what good works good works good works the world is not waiting to see your prayer. Yeah, we should pray. I'm waiting to see your good works. Even the Bible says that your good works, your good works, my good works, my good works. 
They're waiting to see it. That's what the world is waiting for. So another thing here, okay, the question, yeah, I have a question now. Okay, I'm talking integrity. Mm. Mm. When I was writing this down, um, I remembered, um, I remembered some time, a very long time ago, you know, where there was still no, um, there was no um, online recharge um, avenue, you know, so we still used to buy um, scratch uh, cards and all that at that time. So I uh, was somewhere beside my office then, I just wanted to go buy the recharge card. And I wanted to buy 500 recharge card. And I, I bought it and I went to the office. I wanted to load it. Uh -uh. And I saw that it was 5,000 that the person gave to me. 5,000. I wanted to buy 500. I gave her 500, but she gave me 5,000 Naira worth of airtime. What will you do in that case? What will you do? You just say, ah, okay, oh, hey. I don't hit so I don't hammer. What, what, what do we do when even people are not there? What, we, what, what are we going to do? It's not that she could even trace me. <laughs> but I got up immediately and I went back. And I said, Ma, you didn't look at what you gave me. She, she was even like, <laughs> in fact, she was even nasty. They were like, what is what, what what do you mean what is that blah, blah. she was you know she she started talking and i was like look at what you gave me she said yay they say like I, i'm in trouble that was what she said like i'm in trouble i would have been in trouble and she looked at me where are you from please are you from this country i'm telling you what she was asking me are you from this country I said, yes, I walk some few blocks away, says Eli. You are in this Nigeria and you brought this thing back. Ah, in fact, she was almost kneeling down because it was not even for her. It was for, uh, the shop was for her neighbor and her neighbor had stepped out. You can imagine somebody stepping out and leaving you there to just help her and you came <laughs> and you wanted to ruin her business. And she was like, and do you believe before the close of the day, this woman came to my office. So I just wanted to come and know you. That I, I can't believe that people can still do things like this. So what, what will people say about you? What, 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 what's that thing that's going to strike people when they talk about you? Let's just, you know, we're, we're, we're leaving this place, you know, with a reset in our mindsets. We're leaving the word of God is changing us tonight. What are people, what, what would people say about you? What reports do people have to give about you? So I want to pose these questions to us. Okay, you are here and you're like, wow, I love the way Ruth did um, Naomi. You know, I, I love the way she, you know, she, she behaved towards Ruth. You know, she was just all out. She just, she could just do anything for her. You know, I, I want people to go out of their way for me, like Naomi. Like probably you don't know how to achieve this. So how can I achieve this? Very quickly, I've put some things down. Service, that's the first thing. Service, service. How can I better your life? In every relationship, that's, that's what should be your core value. How can I better this person's life? How can I be of service to you? How can I be of service to you? You know, as long as I, I, I call you my friend, as long as I call you my friend, you know, there's nothing I can do for you, really. There's nothing. Even to run errands for you, I can do that. There's somebody, she's not even like friend, friend like that. Somebody that I'm just beginning to get close to. She just really, she just, anytime she just needs something, she'll call. Please, I just need you to help me to buy this for my children, for my children, my children, you know. Oh, are you in the office? Can you help me buy? Ah, my husband is a pocket square. But this, you know, it amuses me 
but I, I still do it. Why? Because I'm all about service. I'm not like, who does she take me for? Am I your errand girl? Am I this? Am I that? I'm telling you, if you want quality relationship, you have to be able to go all out. You have to be able to take the risk. You have to leave the me, myself, and I. Ah, I don't want anybody to, you know, to talk to me anyhow. I don't want anybody to, you know, you have to just leave that pride zone and calm down, you know, calm down, you know, go out there and show people love. Pick up your phone and call. Don't just say, ah, you didn't call me. You didn't call me. What happened to your own hand? If they don't call you, you take your phone and call. It won't take anything from you. It won't take anything from you. I'm telling you, there was there, there's somebody I met her. I met her at the program and I just I just liked her. Okay, and she, she was a lawyer also. She's a lawyer also. I met her at a couple's retreat with her husband. And I was like, mm, I like to know this person better. You know, and anytime I'm within a office area, I I just call or go, or I just go, I just go because. You know, she was walking around the court at that time, you know, so I'll just go, I'll just go breathe, you know. So she was not just telling me that, ah, you're always there for me. You know, my husband, my husband said, hey, this woman that wants to be your friend, does she know you? Hey, does she know that you don't pick calls? Does she know that you don't call people? Hmm, I'm sure if she knows, she'll not even be your friend. <laughs> you know, that was what she was telling me. And she saw that through it all, women will always call, women will always check up on me, women will always this, always that. In fact, there was a time, I will invite her for this program, she will not come. I will invite her for that. There was a time her husband just said, today, Umi has invited you for another program, you must go. And her husband came with her. Her husband didn't know me, she, he came with her. He drove her down and he came with her. And she didn't just come empty and she came with something. You know, she came with gifts for me, you know? And she was like, thank you for loving me the way I am. Yes, because she knows that people who even love somebody like me. I, you know, I am not, you know, that kind of person that goes out to look for people. But you always keep looking for me, you know? So just be yourself, be yourself, love people. Show them the love of Christ. You might think it doesn't matter. They are watching. All these things matter. Although it could be so annoying, really. It could really be so annoying. But at the end of the day, you know you have sown seeds into people's life. I'm talking about commitment here. Ruth was committed to Naomi. Ruth was committed. So that's the second question. Who are you committed to? Let me tell you the secret about building relationships. If you want correct relationships, I'm talking correct, I'm, 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 I'm um, underlining it. Correct relationships in your life. You have to be able to take the risk and go the extra mile. Relationship is about building. How, how, are, how, how are you in the relationships around you? Are you building them or tearing them down? Are you building them or tearing them down? Are you showing people that I can be committed to you? Or are you the kind of person that, you know, oh, I will, tell, I will say, oh, I need you to do something for me. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm going to be there for you. And halfway you back out. You can't stick with me to the end. You can see here that Ruth was a stickler. She was loyal. Are you a loyal friend? Are you a loyal friend? It looks like I'm talking about myself and talking about myself, but that's just what I know. I know myself. I can't speak for myself. I can't speak for any other person. I'm talking commitments. You know, I, I, um, I was saying that we have roots in the house. They are right here in the house, roots, roots. They are right here. In the house, I have my sisters in the house, sister, sister Tony, PM, Nikki, Buki, Darren, that's their triplets. So we call ourselves sisters. 
and how 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 do we get this level of commitment commitment we're committed to one another if you know the way we plan our birthdays a month before the birthday we would have you know would have created a group discussing what are we going to do what are we going to do we are not planning around figure every birthday for the past over three years now that's how we've been doing it everybody's birthday is special everybody's birthday is special everybody's birthday is special my birthday is coming up in may and i know that by the first of next month they will have started preparing you know my last year birthday um they sponsored my husband and i to the radisson blue hotel that was where I did my birthday and they knew that yes, I love I would love to be looking into my husband's eyes. They knew the exact, you know, exact gift I wanted, along with cake anyway. So who are you committed to? How did we build this to this level? We just started, you know, we just of course all of us are serving in this ministry. And then we just we started, we started praying together every week. You know, we started um we started um, spending time with God together every week, every week, every week we were committed. Even on, I remember one Christmas day, we had all gone out for Christmas in in-laws place, in this place, and we're so tired. We still came together as our usual time to have fellowship with God. So what are you building? You know, a lot of us, I'm challenging us. We're going to go out of here and we're going to begin to build. Look at everybody on this call. They are lovely people, lovely sisters. You know, if you want to have quality relationships, just begin to look at, oh, hmm, okay, I think it's, ah, Sister David Seal, ah, and I like the way she, ah, I would like to. You know, so a lot of us, we just don't want to take risks because people have hurt us in the past. Yeah, I've been hurt in the past too. But if you don't forget yesterday, how will you see people to, you know, relate with tomorrow? You know, so that's that that that's a, a challenge I'm posing to us. You know, after this uh, call, I'm sure a lot of us will just begin to not a lot of us so <laughs> because may have my own click already. You know, you just begin to just see DM. How are you today? Yeah, start, maybe start but say they will just say DM. How are you today? From who, who now? From who now? Maybe from uh, Samola. How are you today? <laughs> she be like you, yeah. or she will move away. <laughs> like him, oh, but I, but I fully is not here to translate it. Like what soap did I used to have my bath today? <laughs> what soap did I used to have my bath today? <laughs> it's Nikki, I'll be, I'll be Nikki, I don't want to get the message. Ah, Nikki, honestly, honestly. If I begin to talk about Nikki, Nikki is, oh God, Nikki is Ruth personified. Nikki is somebody that, you know, you can rely on. Like you can rely, you can go to sleep. I know that, ah, this thing is going to happen because Nikki is there. In fact, I was um, there was a day I was thinking thinking about her, and then I understood what God meant when when um, He said, "I know the thoughts that I have towards you," because that was how I felt towards her. I know the thoughts that I have about you. They are of good to give you a hope and a future. That was how I felt. And I understood the way God felt when he was saying that. And I was like, so wow, if I can feel this way towards another human being, that means the way God feels about me, you know, it's so, it's so great. It's so great. Enough, enough about talking about my sisters. I could talk about them, you know, all day. You know, there are some times and I would just be like, ah, Buki, I've not heard your voice. I would just send that voice note, please. Just call me. I just want to hear your voice. Like, I want to hear that voice. I remember when we saw, we all, we all saw at um, Sister Tony's place and we just, 
You just say, okay, okay, we'll say hello to you. We'll not come inside. We'll just park outside and we'll all drove, you know, in different cars and just park in front of our house. You know, immediately I saw her. In fact, I was like, I'm not just going to hug you. I'm going to back you. And I backed her. Or maybe I just, I backed her and then the PM took a, a photograph of us. You know, how do you get this kind of relationships? You build, you go all out. Um, it's a challenge. I'm still posing that challenge to us. I know I'm, I'm really dwelling on it because I want, I want to stir something in us. I want to stir something in us, all within this community. We all got to know ourselves in this community, in this community. Sorry, in this community, I remember, I remember this experience. I'm sure the same will never forget this experience. I remember um, when it was one year that I had known her, one year, I bought gifts, lovely gifts in a gift bag. And coincidentally, we were having a meeting at the off that day, you know, and I just wanted to present it to her. And I just said, P.I., please just come and see what you're doing. Come and see what you're breeding, like how you, you uh, how God is using you in people's lives to build relationships. And lo and behold, you know, I presented it like, uh, it's been one year I first set my eyes on you. And then P.I. PI couldn't take it. She was just, she just broke down in tears that, how, how is this kind of thing possible? Like God used me to do this kind of a thing. So I'm just staring it up in you. Just maybe you need to buy uh, a gift. You know, my own birthday is on the 8th of May. Uh -huh. So if you want me to buy me a gift, if you're looking for someone to buy a gift, you can buy me a gift. So that's by the way. So let's just move quickly. We're going to be moving very quickly now because I've made the core points I want to make tonight. I hope we are being blessed. I hope we're not, we're being blessed. If you are being blessed, please, can we just, uh, can we just show it in the chat room? I know Brother Foley is not here to set the chat room on fire, but please let's just set the chat room on fire. If you're being blessed, hallelujah. And she said to her, verse five, all that you say to me, I will do. So she went down to the threshing floor and did according to all that her mother-in-law instructed her. What struck me here, all that you say to me, I will do. That means Ruth was teachable. Ruth was teachable. Are we teachable? Or are we always right in our own eyes? It is, it is my own opinion. I must win every argument. So, some of us, we cannot even say sorry. Those people, they are not here. They are not here in Jesus' name. We can't even apologize. You know, we've hurt someone, we cannot apologize. It doesn't cost anything. Even if you feel you are right, the fact that that person says I'm hot, that's, that, that is, 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 is that not important to you? I think that should be the most important thing. I'm hot, you hurt somebody. Just say sorry and move on. A gentle answer will, will, will turn wrath away. Even in relationships, even in the relationship between husband and wife, a gentle answer will turn wrath away. So, and, and I also see honor in verse six. She went there, she didn't go, she didn't say, okay, I've heard though. She went there. She didn't go there and go, go, and, uh, go to do something else. I see honor, honor, even the Bible says, in honor, preferring one another. Do we honor ourselves? If somebody gives you access, you just see us, you know, you just see it as um, you just see it as a ground to just, you know, just, oh yeah, now I can talk to the person anyhow. There are some people I cannot give access to. There's some people I can't give access to. I look at you, I look at how uh, uh, this one is gonna abuse access. 
So are you that kind of person? Are you that kind of person? How did you treat access? Do you honor, even if somebody brings you into their space, do you still honor them? Do you honor them? Honor, honor is something I take, I, I take in high regard. I talk about my friend, uh, Sister Fikayo. I've known her, we've been friends for about 20 years now. And the honor is still there. It's both ways. The honor is still there. I still honor. When she gives me a word, I honor it. Why? I honor the prophetic in her life. I honor that prophetic covering. I still see her as my prophet even though she's my friend. Look at these sisters I've talked about now. I have a number of them that I'm way older than them, but they still honor. They still honor. I don't say because I'm in their space now, I shouldn't honor them. So how much more people that are now older than you? Just see them, you feel you can just talk to them anyhow. Honor, honor. Very, very important. Hallelujah. So Ruth was decent. That's in verse 10. Okay, and honor opens doors for you. Honor opens doors for you. Because let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. If you get to a place in five minutes, people can tell the kind of person you are. So if in five minutes they see honor in you, if they see honor in you, favor follows. Favor follows. So if I meet you, I, I meet you in five minutes, what am I going to see about you? What, what am I going to perceive about you? Honor. Access. So now I just want us to jump quickly because I still want us to finish within time. We're going to jump to, okay, we're already in verse 11 anyway. <laughs> For all the people of my town know that you are a virtuous woman. That was what um, Boaz said to Ruth. So all the people in my town. So to the married ones now, what about your in-laws? What will your in-laws say about you? Or are you the kind of person that, you know, you go into a marriage and you feel like, oh, it's just me, my husband and I just my husband and I, you, uh, 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 uh. let everybody go to blazes, door, you know, you know, the way they do the hand, door, you know, talk to the hand. Those kind of people, they are not on the score. They are not on the score. And if we if ever found ourselves in that position, we repent tonight. We repent tonight. We repent tonight. When and for those that are not married, even for those that are married, today is a turning point for every one of us. There must be a vision. What's your vision? What's your vision for your extended family, for your in laws? What's your vision? Vision is what drives you. I entered marriage with a vision. I will never be a bad wife. And that is what has been driving me. Even when things happen, I'm like, um, I think I should just cut, cut this person some slack. Why? Because I don't, I don't want division on the family. I don't want anything that will, that will, that will lead to division, that will lead, lead to anarchy. Some people, your husband cannot even give, uh, you, can't, you can't even stand it for him to help his people. Oh, those people are not here. They are not here. They are not here. Mm -mm. They are not here. They did not come tonight. In, the, in fact, they are not even in this ministry in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In all my years of being married to my husband, to, this year is going to be our 13th year. There is no time that my husband wants to give any of his family members something that I will say no. No time. No time. And everything he gives out, I know. Everything he gives out on a monthly basis, I know. In fact, just last year, I just mentioned to him, I want to sew my car. 
because I felt God was telling me to sew my car. And he asked me, do you have anybody in mind? And I said, no. And he said, I will, it is my desire. I would love to give it to this person in his family. Why didn't I say, oh, is it your family? And this particular person he has already given this person a car before. So why should I, why couldn't I be like, ah, must you give this person a car all the time? Must you? No, 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 no. Ah, if your husband wants to give anybody anything, just go with the flow. Go with the flow. You are not going to be bankrupt. bankrupt. God is going to provide more. God loves a cheerful giver. Are you the kind of person that draws your husband to his people? P.I. will always tell us, you must leave a place better than how you met it. I remember when I came into this, um, um, to my husband's family, you know, and I began to relate with his dad, ha, you know, and it was somebody that all his life, not all his life, or like greater part of his life, you know, you know, he can't really sit, he couldn't really sit then to have like, uh, even like a 20 minutes conversation with his dad. Cause, you know, his, his dad was really, you know, growing up, he was really strict and all that, you know, and I'll be with his dad for one hour. Ah, ah. He was like, ah, ah, please, what are you saying? What were you saying? What are you saying? And then two hours, hey, yeah. Kellen, so what are you saying? You know, I was, I was able to bridge the gap. And then, you know, it was, you know, the relationship began to grow to grow and over the years, you know, they can stay and talk for, you know. So what will people say? What will your in-laws say about you? Will your in-laws say you're a good wife? Although, although there are some exceptions, there are some exceptions, there, there are some exceptions. And I'm telling you, there's nothing that God can do. There is nothing that, there's no one that God can touch. You take it to God in prayers. You fight the battle on your knees. You don't go about insulting them on your knees. Even if they are bad to you, you still be good to them. Yeah. Say no, it's like you don't understand. I know someone that anytime time mother-in-law comes to the house, hey, she does that. It's about, we always cut out the house. Like, you know, she will always set the husband against her on your knees, on your knees, on your knees, on your knees. Let me tell you, even for that kind of mother-in-law, you have a responsibility. God is gonna ask you. That kind of person must not go to hell. God is gonna ask you. God is gonna ask you, you're gonna give account. So you better start interceding for her now, for them now. I remember my husband's, um. 40th birthday some years ago. I was one that planned planned it along with uh, PI and uh, and her sister stuff, Kyle, you know. But I was the one that okay, this is going to be the order of events. And I told my husband, I put it there, dance with his mother. And my my husband said, Oh, you know, I'm not this kind of person. You are the kind of person that likes all this kind of thing. No, 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 no. Just remove it. And I said, and I told him, if not for this woman, we would not even be celebrating this birthday. If not for this woman, we will not be celebrating this birthday. And that dance was there. It was uh, this song that danced, Mama, you know I love you. And the, the mom, mother was so happy. You could see her grinning from ear to ear. That yes, my 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 son recognizes me, recognizes my years of labor. I'm telling you, if not for that woman that you are despising so much, that man will not be there. There was a, there was a time just recently, was it? Um, it was this year. And I was just in my mother-in-law. I was just in my mother-in-law about how. You know, then I, I wasn't feeling so well. And it was my husband that took over the house, you know, doing 
you know, doing even the cooking and all that. And I I knelt down, I said, mommy, Eshe, I thank you for bringing up this kind of man. This kind of man is a rare kind of man. And I attributed, attributed it to her. Thank you, mommy, I'm so grateful. So how are we with our in-laws? <laughs> yes, those people are not here, yes. It's so cute. Yes, they're not here. Oh, ah, like, like, no way are they, you know, they're not here in the name of Jesus, you know? So we're going to be running off very, very soon, shortly, very quickly, so that we could go to bed tomorrow. is another work day. So I, I'm just, you know, I'm just here. I'm, I'm just, I'm just here to be used by God in that relationship, in that marriage. And if you're not married, if you're not married, just make conscious efforts. Make conscious efforts, you know, let them see, let them see the wife in you. Let them see the wife in you. Let them see that commitment in you. Call, call, call your husband's siblings. Call them. You know, even their children, buy them gifts. How much is biscuits? Pure bliss is 100 naira. Even if maybe they are three children, just buy three, 300. You don't have to be all expensive to be good. No, it is the thought that counts. It's the thought that counts. I hope we we'll just, you know, I'm just trying to draw our mind, our attention to all these things where we don't pay attention to. You know, as, as even as married people, just begin to call, call your, call your husband's people, call your wife's people for even the men that are here. Go to family functions together. I don't say oh, they're your family. Uh -huh. No. The family, the, the, the family, the two are one. And you're doing great things together. The Bible says that one is going to chase a thousand, two is going to chase ten thousands. So you are a force together. We are forced together. We are forced together. For those that want to get married, boundaries. That's one of the one of the courses that we teach. One of the uh, topics that we teach, you know, to pick intending couples. Boundaries. There must be boundaries. Yes, you, yes, you want to be a good in law, but there must be boundaries. To so those that are not married, never, never pack into a hostel. What do I call a hostel? The man is already there with, he, with his siblings. And you now want to be the woman of the house. How? How do you want to be the woman of the house? Because you are the last housemate. You are the latest housemate. This is how we do it here. No, you don't, have a, you don't have control. You can never have control of your home because your home is already controlled. So in those kind of instances, you know, we will advise. Go and get a place, both of you, for one year, no family member with you. One year, no family member with you. At least you guys will be able to bond, you'll be able to set your goals, set your family, you know, yeah, everywhere will be clear. But that doesn't mean that you are chasing them away. They could come visit, but not sleeping over, not living with you for the first one year at least. So our in-laws, our uh, in-laws, every, 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 every difficult in-law, every difficult in-law, we arrest them tonight in the name of Jesus. And we declare a turnaround in our relationship with our in-laws. We declare a turnaround tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. So Ruth was faithful to the end, verse 16. Oh, a lot of us, you can see Ruth went back to Naomi to give her feedback. A lot of us, they will connect us to influential people. And then you just, you just cut the bridge. You burn the bridge. You, as I have, I've been saying, those people, they are not here. They will call, somebody will connect you and you will forget that person that connected you. No, that is not, that is not Christ-like. That's not Christ-like. So she went back to her. Faithful to the end, loyal. This is the person that made it happen for me to go to this place. She still went back to her. How do we treat people that have done good to us in the past? Do we see it as a right or a privilege? 
Do we go back to say thank you? So all these things are food for thought for tonight. I think it's a good place to, to wrap up. Do we have any questions? Have we enjoyed it? Have we enjoyed tonight? Have we enjoyed tonight? I hope I have passed. I hope I have passed. <laughs> if I have passed, please tell me I have passed too. Eh? Don't say, uh, I don't want her head to swell. Just tell me, I have passed, you have passed, you have passed too. Hey, my lovely sister. Yeah, I know, I have passed. Thank you. Thank you so much, everyone. Yeah, thank you so much. I'm so grateful. Yes, you can see we are already catching the fire of how to celebrate people. You can see we're already catching the fire. I'm already, you know, getting butterflies in my stomach because of, you know, all these comments that I'm seeing. So we are, we're, we've caught the fire already tonight. So my assignment is, is complete. So I think I can just go. So over to you, Nikki. Nikki pom pom, my pom 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 pom. Over to you, darling. <laughs> Sister me. <sighs> like, I'm actually out of words, but thank you so much. Thank you for blessing us tonight. Thank you for sharing and pouring out your heart. Thank you very much. We just pray that as you have shared and encouraged us tonight, that the Lord will water you and the Lord will continue to fill you in Jesus' name. Thank you very much. And um, tomorrow... We're going to continue with the Bible reading and we'll be, tomorrow's Bible reading will be from Genesis chapter 21, still focused on family and relationships. But now the, the theme is around the covenant and the case study would be Abraham and Sarah. So tomorrow is Genesis chapter 21. Thank you so much, everyone. God bless you. Have a very good night rest. And please remember to join the prayer watches. The next one will take place at midnight um, and then 3 a.m. And then we gather again in the morning at 6. Thank you, everyone. Good night.